Gospel is not inviting people to church, although that's a good thing to do. You search the scriptures, it says, because in them you think you have eternal life, but you won't come unto me, that is Christ, that you might have life. So it's possible for a person to be actively involved in a church and never come to Christ as Lord. Or to study in the church, scripture, as no other church, and never come to him as Lord. In the business of doing church, personalities, programs, feelings, involvement can cause people to want to be part of the church and that desire have nothing at all to do with the Lordship or saving grace in Jesus. The gospel is not teaching about baptism. Although, that's important. I was a decision counselor at Southeast Christian Church in Louisville for three years. During that time, I spoke with dozens and dozens of people, 50-50 for membership and baptism. The church policy there was all members will be immersed. So if you want to be a member, you're not immersed, you've got to be immersed. It was not at all uncommon to have people come forward and say to me, just tell me what I have to do. And I'll do it. Oh, what about Jesus? <laughs> you know, uh, we've got some more to talk about. And it, that's a similar attitude to joining the Quans Club or the Lions Club or the Order of the Odd Fellows. Whatever. What do you mean, whatever? What about Jesus? I got in trouble there one time because I had a young boy. And uh, clearly he hadn't been to church much in his life. And the whole family came together and they wanted the whole family to be baptized at one time. And so I took him through the little book for children that we used. He was clueless. He was no more ready to become a Christian than the chickens that I have at home. I, I, I like my chickens. I don't, I don't kill them. <laughs> Some do. Some do. Uh, minor pets, not food. Um, but this, this young man wasn't ready. And so I went out and I told the guy who was in charge that this young man is not ready. And it was, oh, yes, he is. Why? Because mom and dad wanted that to happen. I'm sure that young man couldn't tell me who Jesus was even after we went through the book. He was that unfamiliar. So it's not just teaching somebody about baptism. <coughs> it's teaching them about Jesus. And these are the things they need to hear. That Jesus was born of a virgin, just like was prophesied 700 years. That Jesus lived a sinless life on this earth just as we are on this earth. And it was just like it was prophesied hundreds of years before his birth. That Jesus died a substitutional death for me and for you that Jesus was buried in a borrowed tomb. That the victorious resurrection of Jesus on the third day was prophesied hundreds of years before it occurred. The resurrection appearances of Jesus, over 500 people are part of the gospel about him and his ascension and his exaltation of Christ. Remember last week that the good news is the story about Jesus presented so attractively and persuasively, <clears throat> persuasively that listeners want to know that person. That's our preparation. I say that if while you're preparing, you, you don't know what to do or say next, that's where elders come into play. That's where Rick comes into play. That's where Sunday school teachers come into play. Christian friends come into play to help us ready ourselves because this is something we 
must be prepared to do. When I was in my first commercial construction projects in Bardstown, Kentucky, I, I became, without anybody saying, I had a preaching background. I all of a sudden became the chaplain. They brought me all kinds of things. Why? Because they could see I was different than they were. I wasn't cut off from them. I, wa I wasn't snotty different. They were drawn to that. People will be drawn to you. I suggest that you not do what was done just four weeks ago in the Sunday school class where, uh, where I attend. The elders, there are two, a small church. Uh, the elders heard that we would have 23 Chinese students coming to our Sunday school class, and they wanted to get ready. So they asked the teacher to step aside for the week, and one of the elders prepared a lesson on who Jesus is. Because what do the Chinese people need to know? Well, number one, I thought it was a hit job. Yeah. Um, they didn't ask. They, they didn't have really have a choice. They, they agree before they can become a member of our master's program that they have to go to church every Sunday that they're here in the United States. So, you know, it's just like a hit job. Now, the results can be very promising, but, but anyhow, that's what it was. <clears throat> the elder read three pages of information on Jesus. Folks, I was sleeping after the fourth paragraph. <laughs> and I can understand English. <laughs> These poor Chinese people, I bless his motive and celebrate his motive, but it wasn't going anywhere. He was prepared with words to say, but maybe hadn't considered his office or, or his, his uh, audience. The role of a testimony is to illustrate the remarkable differences that choosing to believe in Jesus as the Christ of God and choosing to accept His grace have made in your life. Folks, get prepared. Get prepared. If, if you haven't had it happen already, it's going to happen. When you open yourself up to doing what the Lord is commissioning you to do, People will come to you. You'll still have to go to others. But people will come to you to ask you what makes you tick. And it's Jesus. That's the difference. And our opportunity is to lead people to him as Lord and Savior. Father God, sometimes I have to wonder just how wise it is for you in, to entrust the world outside of saving relationship with your Son to us. I pray, Lord, that those in this room, having heard your words, having considered them for years, will get prepared. And that you, Lord, will open their eyes to opportunities around them, and that in seeing them, they will accept them on behalf of the unbeliever. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen.